I've been chatting to Nick, the owner of this Land Rover, and we we're still sort of at sixes and sevens for a pump. Seems you can't get any. <laughs> Uh, I haven't sent the old one away yet because we thought our, to ourselves, well, we need a new pump anyway. And by putting a new pump that we know works onto this engine and getting it running, well, that means that we could eliminate the pump. However, there's something sort of wrong about this motor. I don't know what it is, and it might not be the pump. You know something? I'm very tempted to take this head off while we're waiting because I've got a free day today um, but I noticed something interesting when I was looking at this I'm going to take all these pipes and rubbish off here but you see this engine mount in here can you see how it's bent because you obviously got to take that uh, bung out there for the oil wear for the oil passage and you see this is a this is a red block engine now, if it was MOD, everything's usually painted orange. Uh, blue, should I say. So, has somebody changed this motor? It doesn't look right either. Do you know something? I wonder if somebody's wondering if there is something wrong with this engine. Let's pull the head off. Let's, let's take the cylinder head off. And let's have a look. So what do we need to get this engine off? Well, we're going to take the... I've already got the air cleaner out of the way. <laughs> it wasn't a very good idea to put a hold down clip here at the back, but never mind. It's Land Rover, isn't it? Top hose off. I'm going to take these hoses off completely, get them out of the way. And I'm also going to disconnect the hose for the uh, breather. So flip that out of the way. Uh, injectors out. They've been tested, so we're going to put them in a bag and keep them clean. And then, uh, what else? Well, it's rocker shafts and bits and pieces. Oh, we've got to take off the exhaust manifold. That's not a big deal. So let me get on with those few things before we start taking the rockers and things like that off. The uh, exhaust manifold bolts on here were extremely tight. Uh, so rather than snapping them off, I took the manifold off and just pushed the, the manifold back with the block of wood. I had to undo the clamp. That was quite easy to get off. I want to replace the gasket anyway. There's something to uh, maybe observe a bit, I really don't know. But the intakes on here look more wet than these ones here for some reason. I don't know, if it, I don't know why that is. I would have expected... Look, the exhausts look okay. I don't know, I don't know what we're going to find in here. Pro perhaps nothing. Anyway, next thing, rocker shaft off. We have to take these 13mm uh, headed bolts off and then these bolts that hold the head on. Now I don't particularly like this idea because it can, well you have to loosen everything off. So I'm going to loosen all the head bolts off all at the same time and then take the rocker shaft out. So I'm about to take the head bolts off and take the rocker shaft off. I'm going to do everything at the same time. You could actually take the rockers separately. But first of all, I'm going to loosen off all the bolts off the head. Now this is important. Generally speaking, when you tighten up bolts on a head, you start in the middle and you work to the outside bolts, if you see what I mean. We are going to do the opposite way around. We're going to start at the outside and work in. And that'll prevent a little bit of warping. These old heads were quite nice and rigid for not so much of a problem for warping, but the TDIs, well, being aluminium heads, not very good. Um, I bashed out that lifting up hook at the end, that eye, and disconnected the pipe for the oil feed. So let me whiz them off. I'm just going to use my impact gun to whiz them out, the bolts. I'm not going to use, use a bar and do myself a mischief, but I will put them back in using a torque wrench. So here's something interesting that you could do. I, I've taken all the three quarter inch bolts out or 19 millimeter head bolts here. They're all loose. You have to notice there's two studs on there, they're for locating the gasket. You can use the studs and the nuts again on these, uh, these engines so that's pretty good. But what's happened is because I haven't undone the uh, 13 mil heads on here yet that the head's pushed up using the force of the springs. Sometimes you have a hell of a job trying to get the head gaskets off, but 
this is a little bit of a cheaty way of doing things. Right, so let me get the bolts gathered up, take the 10 mils off, uh, the 13 mils, and then we'll take the shaft off. Once the shaft's off and out of the way, we take off these little caps off the valves and keep them in a bag. Keep them all together, all right? Um, sometimes they can get dropped down here. I have seen them on the TDIs actually fall down here because they're actually smaller than that. And we'll get rid of that gasket as well. And um, so the next thing, we're going to get a bit of cardboard and we're going to punch holes to keep the push rods in the same place. But what we're going to do is going to test the push rods to see if they're, they're flat. Yeah, should you say straight. An old habit I've got into when I'm taking push rods out is get a piece of cardboard, I point a V at the front so that's the front, punch eight holes in and put the push rods through all in a line as you take them out. Now the thing is about that, people, some people say, oh it doesn't matter, they're, they're all alright. But, well, it's a habit you get into and it keeps them all together. So let's have a look and see if we can uh, show you how these push rods can be checked for straightness. I'm quite fortunate to have a nice piece of granite that's been the ground so I know it's flat. You can also use a bit of pet plate glass or some flat steel and, and run it around like this. Now although there are some different markings on and different bits of oil and stuff you can see when you roll it it's nice and flat. That one's a good one we're going to test all eight. So I've got the head ready to come off. Um, just as a little bit of uh, advice, get a piece of wood or something to drop that onto straight away because it's damned heavy as they said and it's not really advisable to lean over like that, not unless there's two of you. So I'm going to stand inside the engine bay and hopefully I can get this off without doing myself a mischief. Right, let's have a look. Everything looks fine in there, there's no visible cracks or anything like that. The head gaskets come off with the head. There's no scores in the cylinders or anything like that. Bit of rust. Hmm. Let's take the head into the shop and have a look at it. Right, the head's in the shop, but let's have a look at the head gasket. There's a head gasket. It looks a bit low here in the middle. It's it's sort of on its way, look. So I'm glad I changed it because it's gone through to the it's worn out a little bit. That would be on number three and four here. But there again, compression was good, but it shouldn't have caused that misfire. Hmm. Let's get a bit of paper towel and clean it up. So, I cleaned off the head gasket. Nothing. It seems a bit low heat, like there's, there's marks in the middle. But ironically, that wasn't where we really had our problem. It doesn't look good, I must admit. I'm glad I am replacing it. It's got top on here, but there's no marks on it to, to say whose actual make it is. It's not a metal gasket, it's like a composite gasket. Hmm. I have seen these blow 
through here onto the oil, you know, where the oil return is, where the push rods come through. I've seen them go there, but you certainly know when they're uh, blown because it blows all your engine, engine oil out your breather. Um, hmm. What a mystery. Let's have a look at the engine. I quickly uh, wiped off the block with a paper towel and specifically looking at the V's to see if there's any cracks. Now we don't want to turn this engine over if possible because uh, obviously we've got the timing belt off. Well you can see there it's not bad. There doesn't look anything untoward does there? So let's go and have a look at the head. One real quick way to test for valves if <laughs> it's not seating properly just fill them full of uh, parts washer fluid and just leave them. Go and have a cup of tea and then come back and see if any levels have gone down. And if you can, get a flashlight and have a look at the valves themselves and see if they're dribbling by. They seem okay to me. I know it's a crude test, but I don't think this engine's done many miles, to tell you the honest truth. There's no ridge wear on the, on the block. Everything's nice and clean. It's not gungy inside. Let's have a look at the gasket. Not the flop, not the jack. <laughs> uh, I'm glad I'm changing it because look at that head gasket, that uh, manifold gasket there. That was about to blow. So I'm pleased I'm changing that. It's a bit carboned on number two. Yeah. Nothing so far to signify that this uh, is the cause of the misfire. So one pot of Yorkshire tea later and we have all the levels exactly the same. That's not joking, I've left them for a good half an hour, three quarters of an hour and they're fine. So I'm going to clean up this head and we're going to check the surface. So whilst this is still in the parts washer I've just given this a very light sand off just to get the carbon off and it's looking remarkably good. There's no cracks between the valves. The valves all look nice and clean. You know, I just give them a quick wire brush off and they come up nice. However, we have a little problemette. I don't know if you can see these cracks. These always crack. And the rule of thumb was if you could get your nail in them, throw them away and put new ones in. But these have started to crack to the extremities. And you see here, this is starting to, this little crack here is working its way to the pin. Another crack there. This one's cracked all over the place. Look, it's cracking over here, over here. The last thing we want is these to drop out. <laughs> That'll spoil your day. This one too is not as bad. Got a few cracks in it. We're here, we'll change them. All right. So the next thing, we're gonna get our straight edge out and have a look and see how straight this is. Okay, this may not be the most perfect world's best way of testing if a head's flat, but it'll certainly give you an indication. I'm using some square tubing, aluminium square tubing, it's usually pretty flat. I've put a light at the back, it's probably blinding you now, wait a minute, let's turn that down a bit. Right. And what we're looking for is any light underneath. Uh, apart from looking, you know, you can see there where the valve's sticking through, but that doesn't really matter. We're looking between here to see if there's any light. Looks good and it feels good. Now another thing, the, the hot plugs here should have a little bit of, should be pronounced a little bit. And indeed, they are, look, they're sticking out and you can actually feel them with your fingernail. So, we'll change those. I haven't got any in stock. I'll order some up. Um, but I'm quite happy with that head. I don't think there's anything wrong with it, honestly. I'm not going to take it down to a machine shop to, to tell them it's all right. You know, I've seen them 20 times worse than that. So we'll, we'll get a set of plugs. The only other thing to check now is somebody suggested that the rollers on the uh, cam could be knackered or there's a flat spot on the cam or something like that. Well, I doubt it, but let's have a look. What we're going to do is take some of these little bolts out of here. These hold the cam followers in, or the lifters as they call them over here. Now, we're not concerned about number one and two, because they were running fine. 
Well, let's have a look at the back ones. We're just going to take one out at a time and see how they come out. So I'll jump inside and do myself a mischief, and then we'll uh, we'll show you. We'll take one out at a time and have a look and inspect. I'm going to start on this back one here because uh, looks like I'm going to have to take the vac pump out to get to this one. So I'm sick of getting in and out of this car. Uh, these have been held on by with a bit of Loctite. I've got a sneaking feeling these have never been out before. So with a pair of pliers, I don't know if you can see this, we're going to pull out the lifter, make sure we know which is front, and try not to drop. the roller into the uh, engine. That's what we're looking for. All beautiful and clean like that. You know, look, this is this. Uh, I, I know this engine's not very old. Look, that's just rubbing that over with a piece of paper towel. See how clean that is? Now, you can't put these in the wrong way around because they've got there's that's where the pin goes, and this is where oil goes. This little brass. piece, the follower, again is in beautiful condition. Pay attention when you're putting these back in. There is a little F just here at the bottom. That means it goes to the front. We have no cause for concern there. I'm going to reassemble that with some oil. Now to reassemble it's quite easy. We just drop that all the way down into the bottom and, and then put the roller in. If you see what I mean. So we have to be careful because we don't want the roller to fall in because otherwise we'll have to take the side covers off. We don't want that. So I'm going to get back to this, check them and if there's anything to report you'll be the first to know. What I'm doing here, I don't know, what am I doing here? <laughs> what I'm doing here is I've put my dial test indicator uh, I've checked the rollers out, but I didn't check the cam. So what I've got is I've put the dial test indicator on top of the follower, and we're going to turn the cam. See, look, that's there. She's starting to hit the peak, and you see how smooth that is. There, there's the peak. Just there, look. It's nice and smooth. If the rollers were notchy or anything like that, it would give an indicator it would be jumping all over the place. But it's not. I'm going to check all the rest of them and we'll, uh, we'll come back. So, the next thing we're going to check, somebody said it could be a bent rod. Well, again with our dial test indicator we can set this up. We set the dial test indicator Ooh, a bit fiddly. We get a bit closer. Now I should set this so you can see it. Well, I'll turn the camera around, it'll be easier. Yeah, I'll bring the camera over this side. I've set the dial cage on number four, and I'm just going to turn the crank a little bit so we can sh show you where the top dead center is. It's actually there, look. So that's on zero. We're going to reproduce that on uh, all the rest of the cylinders, and it should be somewhat even. So as you can see, It's pretty even. I've checked them all. So, if there was a 
if there was a bent rod the piston would be a bit lower it wouldn't be higher but there you go so I don't know what's wrong with it and even when you feel them you know they're good and check the front ones just as a yep just before we wrap this up there's one little test you can do it sometimes works it sometimes doesn't I have to do a full service on this vehicle and I've got to change the oil big deal so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a plastic cup with a mark on like this I'm going to put some diesel in every cylinder so what I've done is I've, I don't know if you can I don't know if you can see but I've turned the pistons so they're all on the same level I've put my socket on and turned them so, so they're all on the same level and then I'm going to fill them with diesel like from here and um, we'll come back now I'll, I'm going to shut my camera off because it's rock pouring down at the moment and then uh, I'll come back and I'll show you what I'm going to do so there's my plastic cup that's some diesel you could do petrol if you want but it's a bit flammable and uh, it can do one of two things it can if any if the level goes down rapidly then you some bad rings or something like that um, It'll also free off some rings if they're a bit sticky. I don't know, there's no guarantee of that. It's just a thing you can do when the head's off, that's all. But like I say, the diesel, if, it, if there is leaking, it'll run into the sump. Well, it doesn't matter because I'm going to drain the oil off anyway. So there you go, there's another little thing you can do. Now, we did do a compression test on this engine. And the rear cylinder number four was just a little bit down. Um, I don't think it's much to worry about. But you can see the rust on here, look, you can see there's some rust in that uh, cylinder. So I'll tell you what, what time is it now? Quarter past, uh, ten past three. Let me uh, go and start putting this video together. And then we'll come back and have a look where the level is. So I've just come back to this after an hour and a half of putting this video together just to try and piece this all up. And we've got no diesel in here nothing at all two good three good four good yeah when we did the leak down test and we did all the other tests everything was fine but the problem wasn't in number one or number two it was number three and four. Oh man this is driving me bonkers dear me I don't know what to think um, I'm going to leave this a little bit longer but I'm going to wrap this video up because I'd like to put it out tonight um, when I do the head I will change the oil the valve stem oil seals because they'll be probably dry and um, yeah I don't know I don't know what to make of this that's weird that's really that's that's really got me now uh. Tell me your thoughts, tell me your feelings, help me through this <laughs> dilemma. <laughs> Alright, so we'll talk to you later. Um, we've got plenty of time, we've got another couple of weeks before the uh, injector pump gets here. But that, wasn't, that number one wasn't the problem. If you remember going back to the uh, uh, head test when we cracked the uh, injector off, that went down like a stone. That was good compression, so was that one, these two weren't thoughts and feelings oh moral support please bye now see you in the next video <laughs>